Good morning. 14 years ago, uh, Grace and I took off on a motorcycle trip. We lived in Bismarck, North Dakota. We, we traveled to Chicago and we got on Route 66 and rode Route 66 all the way to the Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles. And uh, then we went up the West Coast and over the mountains and spent about three days then in uh, the Grand Tetons uh, in Yellowstone before we came back home. It was uh, about uh, 25 days on the road, uh, staying in motels every night, uh, riding about 350 to 400 miles per day, and had just an absolutely wonderful time. It was sort of a semi-sabbatical at that time. I needed the time, and on that trip, you, as you might recall, um, I we, we took a little side tour up to Kansas City, and the uh, Second Baptist Church Search Committee took a little trip down to Kansas City, and there I preached on a Sunday morning uh, to, the, to the congregation at Victory Hills Baptist Church. And in, in uh, the congregation that day were members of the search committee, who were part of, uh, and that was, and then we met together afterwards, and then Grace and I were back on the road to complete our trip. And while I was on that trip, I did something, um, uh, we did something, I shouldn't say I did, Grace and I did something. We did a, a, a journal-type devotional. Every day we, we wrote uh, out a journal. We went to the most of the hotels, motels we stayed at, had a computer down in the lobby. This was before smartphones. For us, we did not have a smartphone. And uh, so we went down to the lobby and we typed in on the, com the computer and, and, and posted on a uh, travel blog a devotional. And I want to share one of those devotionals. And you will notice that as this uh, video is sent to you, the link for that devotional is also on, will be on that particular email. And so I encourage you that uh, if you'd like to follow along, if you'd like to read that daily for the next several weeks, you can follow along with us. It ended, it started right around the end of May, which would be next week. Memorial Day is the day that we took off on that, that trip uh, 14 years ago. And you can follow that blog. And, and uh, it's a devotional which highlights some, some biblical things as we noticed along the way on our trip. And so let me read, let me share with you just one of those devotionals this morning. This was the second day of the trip. We, it says, we arrived in Mankato, Minnesota, early today around 2 o'clock and rested. We will probably have to ride in the rain on Tuesday but we only have about 350 miles to go to Rockford, Illinois on Tuesday, which is a northern suburb of Chicago. Each day, Grace and I have, have some scripture to look at and contemplate about journeys depicted in scripture. It seems every movement of God involves a journey and travel. Nothing worthwhile ever occurs in scripture without someone taking a risk and taking a journey to accept it or to accomplish it. Journey sometimes involves someone going someplace special like Noah, who was really just adrift for several weeks, or Abraham, where God told him to go but gave him no specific destination, just told him to go. In each case, they either responded with, Lord, here I am, send me, like we find in Isaiah chapter 6, or more like in Jonah, Lord, I think I'm going to get out of here. I don't think I'm in line with your plan, and I'm going to take off in the other direction. So in other words, we can either be obedient or we can do things our own way. Our scripture today was in the very beginning of Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. And I'm not going to read that now. You can look that up yourself. Genesis 3, 22 through 24. After Adam and Eve committed to sin by t taking the forbidden fruit, they had a perfect vacation spot, complete with a garden, right where they lived, where they had fruit trees and plenty of solitude. And it was even a clothing optional. In other words, at that time, they were thinking, what is clothing? That's something they weren't even familiar with. And unlike the vacation that Grace and I are enjoying, they had no expenses. God provided every need that they had. I remember having car problems when we went on vacation. They didn't even have that issue. And yet they had another problem. They had a heart problem. 
The loving creator gave them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and they took the whole liberty thing just a little bit too far. And one of the most generous yet dangerous gifts God gives is free will. He gave that to Adam and Eve, the freedom to obey or to disobey him. Today, as I was riding down the road, I could see a long ribbon of Highway 15 weaving south through Minnesota. I had a choice. I could drive on the right side of the center line or the left side. I could drive on the road or I could even drive in the ditch. However, there would seem to be some pretty extreme consequences to my choices. The choice Adam and Eve made in the garden cost them paradise. They actually thought their choosing the fruit from the forbidden tree would bring them greater freedom. At least that's what the serpent had told them. When I reflect on my own life, I can see where I have traded freedom for more problems, worry and care. It's ironic that we actually gain freedom not by moving away from God, but by rather moving toward God, the giver of life. In doing so, we gain a relationship with the one who is holy and pure and brings complete joy and happiness. Why do I have so many trouble? Why do I have so much trouble getting that and understanding that that's what God's plan is? Amen. I hope that you have a great day ahead of you. I hope that you'll take time to look at that blog and, and follow it and just click on it and it should come up. It's been there a long time. It's been there 14 years on that, on that same site. And I hope you take time to look at it. You have a great day. Amen.